Okay, so ngayon na na-solve na natin yung ating uh, total stress. So, it's time to solve for our pour water pressure. So, paano naman masasolve ang pour water pressure? So, ganun pa rin naman, di ba? Gamma H pa rin siya. Yan lang, gamma H lang na kung saan mayroon lang na tubig, di ba? So, gamma ng water, syempre, 9.81. Kapag ka hindi given, automatic na yan. Dapat kabisado natin. Times yung H po natin, yung height natin, which is... Okay, ano lang ba yung height na may tubig? Ito daw yung groundwater table natin. So, simula pa ba hanggang dito, pababa, yun yung merong height na may tubig tayo. However, nag analyze lang po tayo hanggang sa mid-height ng clay. So, therefore, yung height na gagamitin natin for uh, water, okay, ay dapat simula dito lang hanggang dito sa mid-height ng clay layer natin. Which is equal to T2. Ano po ba yung T2 natin? 4 meters. Plus, yung ating T3 na clay layer. Okay. 8 meters. However, yun nga, mid-height lang ang i-analyze natin. So, dapat tayo ay over 2. So, solving for our pore water pressure, we will get the value of 9.81 times 8. Ayan. So, ang ating pore water pressure po ay 48 kN per square meter or parehas lang din po siya ng KPA. So, ngayon na may value na tayo ng total pressure. So, ngayon na may value, value na tayo ng pore water pressure. Finally, we can solve for our effective pressure. So, dito ko na lang ilalagay no, yung effective pressure natin. So, yung ating effective pressure is equal to so, total pressure daw. Ano ba yung total pressure natin? 186 so, yung effective pressure, 186 minus pore water pressure natin, which is minus 78.48. So, yung ating effective pressure na nararamdaman natin ay equal to 107.52 kN per square meter. So, bakit po natin ulit sinolve yung effective pressure na nararamdaman sa mid-height ng ating clay layer? Kasi po, ito pong ating effective, pre uh, effective pressure, siya po yung ating P1 or yung initial pressure na wala pang additional loading. No? So, ngayon, ito effective pressure, meron na po tayong P1. Okay, so alam na natin yung H1, alam na natin yung P1. So, paano naman natin makukuha yung ating P2. So, alam naman natin, okay, ba? Yung P2 natin is equal to P1 plus delta P natin. So, ano ba yung delta P? Ito yung ating delta P na yung additional loading doon sa ating ground surface. Which is equal to, ayun, 50 kPa. So, i-add lang na pala natin yung ating initial na effective stress. So, ano ba yung effective stress natin? So, ito yung effective stress natin na nakuha, 107.5 52 plus delta P natin. Ano ba yung delta P? 50 kPa. So, therefore, yung ating po palang P2 ay equal to 152 57. Sorry. 157.52 kPa. Okay. So, ano pa kayang kulang doon sa ating okay, sa ating equation. So, balikan natin. No? So, meron na tayong H1 Meron na tayong P1 or initial effective stress. So, meron na rin tayong P2, yung may additional na change in effective stress. So, alam ba natin tong EO? Yes, initial void ratio. Initial void ratio ng clay layer natin. So, yes, alam na rin natin to. And then, okay, yung isa na lang pala yung kulang natin, no, which is yung CC. Okay, so again, paano ba isosolve yung CC natin? Ito po, CC is equal to 0.009 LL daw minus 10%. So, ano ba yung LL? Yun po yung liquid limit. So, which is given naman dito sa ating problem. No? So, solving for CC. So, CC daw po is equal to 0.009 liquid limit minus 10%. So, 0.009. So, ano ba yung given natin na liquid limit? Ayun. 40 minus 10. So, ang CC po natin ay 0.27. So, ito po yung coefficient natin para sa ating compression index. No? So, balikan natin yung ating uh, settlement for primary consolidation. It is equal to 
initial height ng no, ating uh, soil layer kung saan nag-occur yung ating consolidation plus initial void ratio natin times so normally consolidated tayo so therefore we are dealing with compression index multiplied sa logarithmic na P2 over initial natin na pressure. So meron na tayo lahat no. So yung H1 daw natin initial height kung saan nag-occur yung consolidation natin. So saan po ba nag-occur ulit ang consolidation? So again, dun lang po sa ating fine grain soils dahil doon mahirap or matagal nag squeeze out yung ating pour water. No? So, nag-occur yung consolidation natin sa clay layer. So, T3. So, initial height is 8 meters. Okay? Initial height. So, hindi po yan uh, 4 meters na 8 over 2, ha? Kasi po, ang dun sa ating derivation, di ba? Okay. 8 meters or yung initial height nga po yung gagamitin dito. Okay. All over 1 plus initial void ratio natin. Initial void ratio is 0.8 times yung ating compression index which is na solve natin sa previous slide na okay 0.27 times yung logarithmic po ng ating okay dito sa taas yung ating effective stress plus delta P so ano po ba yung ating P2 so 157.52 kPa all over dun sa ating initial effective stress. So, ano ba yung initial effective stress natin? So, syempre, wala pa siya nung delta P. So, 107.52. 107.52. Wait. So, therefore, our settlement caused by primary consolidation is equal to 0. Point... <laughs> okay. Ay, tama pala. 1, 9... 90 okay 1990 meters or okay in millimeters 199.0157 millimeters okay so ito po yung ating okay for case letter A so medyo mahaba kasi sinolve pa natin yung effective stress pero for case B and case C so mababilis na yung ating solution